This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show at the 2014 Newport Beach Film Festival with Ruby Rose and Phoebe Dahl celebrating the premiere of the film Around the Block. Starring Christina Ricci and Ruby Rose. You are this icon in Australia. The fact that you're an MTV VJ over there, have you thought about breaking out over here in America? Yeah, I mean, I moved here about a year ago, and I've been coming back and forth for six, seven years, and I've made the, the official change, so I'm living here and, and getting started now. This movie is such a great way to kickstart that, and a fiancé helps as well. Yeah, now, uh, Phoebe, how did you meet? We met at my house. My I was having a party, and she, a friend, a mutual friend of ours, brought Ruby. And how did you know that it was love? You know, it's it's so cliche, but and I, I, we always say this: but when you know, you know. And it was just that kind of instant moment that I was like, "Oh God, I'm in trouble." Now the amazing thing is that you guys are engaged. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is. But someone will marry me, and that is quite amazing. Let's let's be honest; it's spectacular. Well, it's always amazing that anybody would marry anybody because it's such a hardcore commitment. It is, but I mean, I've never felt so sure about something, you know, other than wearing this navy blue jacket tonight, which I was also very sure about wearing. <laughs> but I feel like it's something we wanted to do. We have a lot of plans, you know, for, for our future, and it just, you know, you get excited, you're in love. It's like you live once, why not? What do you love about Ruby? What don't I love about Ruby? Oh my god, everything. That smile, look at that smile. <laughs> oh. <laughs> When she's away, what are the things that you remember about her that kind of excite your heart? Um, her, her sense of humor. She makes me laugh all the time. I, I, every single hour, it's just joke after joke, and she's, we're just always laughing. And um, Yeah, I miss her a lot when she's away, and that's what I miss most. And what do you love about Phoebe? You're gonna make us cry! Goodness gracious! This is to do that. It's like a 60 minutes it. interview. I love you. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to see people in love. we all do. When, yeah, we do, right? I think when I'm away from Phoebe, I, I, well, I Skype her every five minutes, and then I call her on, on the, every third minute, and I still miss her like hell in between. And I think I just like look at that face, look at that face, and those eyes, and her intellect, and the way she makes me feel. And, you know, she's just spectacular. You are the face of Maybelline in Australia. That's right. Right, now, how did that come about? I have no idea. I woke up one day, they had approached my, my manager to be the face. I thought it was a hoax, um, you know, because it, that's a really daring uh, kind of role model for them, a tattooed, short haired, kind of more rocky chick when they've really strayed away from the supermodels. And I'm five foot six and I'm not going to be a supermodel anytime soon. So it was really, um, it was really a unique kind of proposition to be able to be the face of something that speaks to households around the world and into, you know, Australian homes and speak to these, these young girls and adults and talk to them about being unique as well as being able to have fun with makeup. It's awesome. One of the things about Around the Block is that you have a love scene with Christina Ricci, which is an enviable position for any actress or actor. Uh, tell me about that. Was it uncomfortable for you or was it natural? Um, it just got uncomfortable now because I hadn't actually <laughs> told her that, oh, that, no. that I, I was going to say, this is, this is the boring bit, go to the bathroom. Um, look, you know, it, I wasn't nervous. I, I wasn't nervous about the sex scene. I wasn't nervous about the nudity or, you know, I mean, it wasn't a very big leap of acting for, for myself uh, in that regard. But I was nervous about being uh, alongside someone that is so just, you know, like talented. And, and so she's been around for, since, you know, she was born, it feels like. And the Adams Family I grew up on. And it, every movie she's been in, I've seen. So I was just honoured to be in her presence. And as soon as I met her, she's so humbling. And it, it was just... It was an easy scene, what can I say, but you know, not, not as enjoyable as one would think. In Australia, what are the laws about same-sex marriages? Are they different than here in America? Yeah, they're, they're really backwards. They're, you can't marry same-sex. It doesn't look like it's even on the cards right now. Our Prime Minister is, what they would say, is probably one of the worst Prime Ministers around for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I thought you guys would be a little more liberal over there. You, well, you would, would think. think so. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I wish that I had the answers for why everywhere else seems to be getting on board that train and why Australia is just so conservative in regards to it. It's heartbreaking. Have you guys set the date? Uh, next year in spring. Would you like to have children? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Of course. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, now my thing with children, okay, it's I, I feel like having children is almost a selfish thing because we want to see ourselves in our offspring, okay? How how is that gonna happen with you guys? Like who's gonna be the one that carries the baby, do you think? I think we both will. We both will. We'll take we'll take turns. Take turns? Yeah, and I think we'd also like to ad adopt, adopt as well. I, I like the idea of also adopting a child that, that is in need of somewhere to, to be, you know, and get them out of somewhere that could be potentially life threatening and dangerous and give them the upbringing that they deserve, that every kid deserves. So as much as I would love a little tiny Ruby running around, I also, you know, don't mind if I get a Ru Rubika or something. <laughs> I don't know. We can do it all. I do think that you do get uh, a lot of your uh, good parts and your not so good parts from your your parents. And I, I have two very different and very individual uh, parents. <laughs> and I definitely have characteristics from both of them. Phoebe, what are your makeup must-haves and name them? My eyebrow pencil. And who's it by? It, I, gosh, who is it by? I think just it's... Say Maybelline, just say it. Maybelline. <laughs> what are you thinking? Maybelline, 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 Maybelline. And you? Maybelline, everything Maybelline. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm all about when it comes to makeup and how you look. It's like, we both, we both drink a lot of water. We both stay really fit. We both don't drink. Well, she drinks sometimes. I don't drink. Uh, and, like, keep moisturized and stay out of the sun and just simple stuff like that. And then, of course, to look eyebrows. extra amazing. Eyebrows are very important. Uh, but also, yeah, Maybelline involved in every element of that process. Wow, it's too bad. We can't talk about MAC tonight, can we? No, who? Exactly. I was waiting for that. But you know what? Hey, Mac has to be the underdog sometime. Well, I'm just surprised how much you know about makeup. Let me be honest. Yeah, a, I've been a makeup artist for 17 years. Oh, wow. Really? Okay. What music groups do you guys love right oh, now? What's your wedding song? Uh, my wedding song? Um, I There's this one song that I love. It's an all-time favorite. It's a it's a classical song. It's called Canon in D by Pachelbel. Um, and I, ju I just love it. It's the song that I always revert back to, and um, it makes me the happiest. Look, <laughs> you are an MTV VJ. You know what's hot and happening in music. What are, just name two groups that you think are the future of music. I mean, I'm really into electronic music, so I, groups wise, I don't even know, I mean, bands right now, I think it's like One Direction is big, but as far as like my kind of music, EDM, it's like Zed, Avicii, Tiesto, uh, uh, mate, uh, Martin Garrix, like there's just you know so many great people coming out of all different parts of the world, and then out of Australia we've got Flume and you know Grant Smiley, and it's yeah, there's a lot of music going on. What do you speaking about EDM? What do you think about Skrillex? I love Skrillex. I have nothing but amazing words to say about him. I toured with him in Australia uh, on a festival lineup, and he was the most humble, sweet, and strangely gifted yeah. creature. Like, he's just constantly on the go, and I just would love to get inside his brain. It's so and, good. And you. You are a recording artist also. I am. Tell me about your music. I have been strictly fairly EDM this far, uh, but I'm getting back in the studio now with a couple of different producers and a couple of different co-writers, and I think I'm going to go on a slightly different route. I just don't know what exactly yet, because I'm a Pisces, so one minute I'm like, I want to do hip hop, and like, I'm going to learn how to like, you know, like crunk or something, and then I'm like, no, I want to do singer-songwriter, and then I'm like, no, I want to do EDM, no, I want to do, you know, so country and western was really big for me at one point. Look, once you make it in one venue, you can do whatever you want. That's true. So you're known as a little a little controversial in the entertainment business. I am, but you know, I've never quite been able to pinpoint what it is about me that's controversial. Like, I've never had a DUI, I've never done time in jail, I've never been in any real any real mess. I have tattoos, I'm gay, but I mean, Ellen's gay and a lot of people have tattoos so you know I don't know what makes me controversial I'm actually quite straight edge and quite normal for lack of a better word I think anybody that is comfortable with being themselves that is in the public eye a lot of time gets attacked for being themselves Probably, but you know, if you've, when you have a, a mind like myself and you know what you're coming into or what you're getting yourself into, albeit I was a bit young and I did a little bit like what we were talking about earlier, you get a little bit too big for your riches too soon, but you, you check yourself when you get to a certain age and you, you realise that you signed up for all the, the goodness and the badness and you take it and leave it as it comes, you know, you don't take it too seriously. Phoebe, you are a fashion designer? I am. What inspires your designs and uh, how Ruby is involved in them? It's a heavy question. Um, what inspires my designs? I'm very inspire, inspired by Japanese folkwear, so f old 1800s uh, farmwear, so like kind of big oversized um, linen garments. Um, very simple, very, I just have four fabric options, all linen. Um, and 
and Ruby. It's it's also an ethical clothing line as well. So for each piece that I sell, I put one young girl in Nepal through a year of schooling. Um, and Ruby and I have actually just been talking recently up until like an hour ago. <laughs> we were talking about it all day. Um, about um, just working together and how we can kind of move forward in the... Um, just in the charity aspect of the brand and how we can kind of collaborate and do a uh, more streetwear brand um, under under Faircloth and yeah, big things to come. We're both huge advocates of um, eco-friendly and and know where your products come from and so we're we really kind of see eye to eye on that level and are, are coming up with great things. How do you feel about the future of the world right now? The future of the world? Oh, uh, I wish I had something more positive. That's such a downer hopeful, question. No, it doesn't have to be. Always hopeful. I'm hopeful. <laughs> I feel like we need to take action now to secure a future for the world. And then I'm very hopeful for anything and everything. I'm a really optimistic person. Mm -hmm. But I do think that if we keep behaving the way we are on this earth, like we can be so passionate about sex trafficking in Nepal or poverty in Africa or, or you know AIDS or you know all these different things. But if we don't have a world to live on, what do each of these individual problems mean? You know, and we need to definitely start working from the ground roots up and work on the environment and, and how we treat people and animals and everything therefore on. The Blaring Out Show.